kill about once a month, um, maybe twice. Not very particular about my targets. Just people I don't think will be missed. It means I gotta do my homework beforehand. I prefer to use a knife, and after I'm done, I make sure that it's not so easy to identify them. Well, I can see it in your eyes already. I think you got me all figured out, huh? Uh, let's see. Uh, he had a dominant mother, and that's why he hates women, and that's why he doesn't. Well, we'll go ahead and think that, you know, I honestly don't really care what you think. I'm just here to tell you why I do what I do. Then I'm going to get back to doing it. They called me the Skid Row Slasher. I'm not sure where I heard that before. That was a movie. I mean, I do kill a lot of street people. Prostitutes, that kind of thing. But, um, you know, I, I don't really care for the name, though. It's too Jack the Rippery. It's too melodrama. You know, top hat, long mustache, that kind of thing. Thinking of something else, uh, well, uh, I'll let you know when I, you know, think of something. Believe it or not, I was a pretty normal kid. <laughs> Until I turned 10. That's when I got weird. Um, I think it started about puberty. Somewhere around there. I didn't kill small animals or watch women in dress or any of those standard serial killer things that uh, kids do. I did have a fascination for sharp knives. I don't have any idea why. Is, why do guys play with themselves? reason I like knives. So, I would go downstairs after everyone was asleep and go to my knives. Uh, my favorite was the butcher knife. Just like any old knife in a horror movie, you know? So, I would take them out, lay them on the counter, and just take turns Touching them like some obsessive compulsive little game. Alright, so I would imagine with these knives, I had the power over life and death. What can I say? I was an imaginative kid. <laughs> now, I'm not talking about killing anyone or anything like that. I'm just speaking in the metaphorical sense. You know? See, I was already strange like that. My parents had nothing to do with it. I just grew up weird. But um, I probably just would have grown out of it. One night I'd been downstairs for about 10 minutes when there heard this noise. It's my sister just standing there looking at me. I didn't know what to do. But I didn't have to worry because she made the decision for me. She just started screaming. I don't know why it wasn't like I was trying to hurt her or anything. I guess it just must have looked weird. <laughs> and she was screaming and yelling and I wanted her to stop so I just tried to grab her and I had this knife in my hand and, and I killed her. I don't remember much after that. Uh, there were some lights the Paris, I think, and uh, all I know is I was crying. Oh, does that sound surprising? You hear a lot of stories about these uh, psychos and how they don't feel anything after that. Their faces are blank, but I was a kid. That's why I was crying.
my parents, they never really <clears throat> spoke to me after that. Oh, I saw them. I mean, they were around during the whole... But they were scared. I mean, I don't blame them. But this was the first time that I saw fear. Not surprise or shock, mind you. Actual fear. This place I got stuck in was like this hole where they stick people they don't want to deal with anymore. I mean, if my own parents couldn't talk to me, it wasn't fun. I'd expect a few knocks on the head at least once a day from the guards. Yeah, we didn't have orderlies. It was more jail than hospital. And the food, it looked like food, but it didn't taste like it. But the worst thing was the people, my fellow inmates. At least in jail, people talk to you. They might rape and kick the shit out of you in the day, but at night, you could always count on some kind of conversation. While I was there, they just stared at you. They said things, but they didn't talk to you. They barely walked, kind of just shuffled from room to room. You never know what you got till it's gone. Every day I prayed my parents would just come and see me. I mean, not to forgive me. <laughs> I don't think I could have forgiven myself. But a little acknowledgement would have been nice. You know, it's by this time that you really know what's important in life. Yeah, stop sweating the small stuff, you know? You know, it's not hope that keeps them going crazy. Hate. And believe me, there's plenty of that going around. Oh, especially in those places. And there's the cages, the psychs, the guards, the food, and the rape. <laughs> Some of that. Oh, the laughing. <laughs> there's a lot of laughing. Laughing at you and with you. I'm not sure which one was worse. You know? Hey, if you ran out of things to hate, there's lots of alone time to pick up some new stuff. Finally, after 23 years, my case comes up. That's after a couple of transfers due to various circumstances. And then I'm judged, restored to sanity, and sent on my merry way. It just goes to show you how messed up our judicial system is. They locked up a scared kid and let loose a dangerous psychopath with borderline personality disorder. Oh, it turns out I got OCD too. You know, the whole knife thing. First thing I do is go home. I mean, I wasn't expecting much, but not what I got. No parents, no forwarding address. None of my stuff boxed up on the lawn. Just an empty house for sale. I mean, I still don't even know if they're alive or dead. <laughs> the house was empty. Well, it was when I left. God, I've never been much of a gardener. So it took about two weeks for the old feelings to come back, along with some new ones. Yeah, two weeks of uh, sleeping in a flop house, eating from soup kitchens, and uh, selling your ass in the street. Not my ass. I had someone do that for me. So that Sunday, Nowhere I get the urge to do a little shopping. I check out the closest knife shop and pick out the best one I can find. Sharpest, the biggest. God, it still gives me shivers thinking about it. <sighs> and the great thing was it didn't cost me an arm and a leg. Well, it did kind of cost an arm and a leg and an eyeball and a throat. I'm not a very good joke teller either. <sighs> well, I guess that sort of wraps things up. You know something I never, uh, I never thought to count my victims. <laughs> kind of strange considering my OCD and all. Oh wait, I know. 27 men, 18 women, and seven kids, boys and girls. <laughs> if you want to read about it, you can. Somewhere, the paper. Oh, I've been thinking of taking some time off, you know. Um, 
reconsidering a few things, new options. I mean, God, knives are great and all. I mean, they'll be with me the rest of my life, but... Man's got to grow. Try some new things. Think outside the box. You know? Find a bigger stage. I think the internet's a good spot. I mean, check out the videos on YouTube. There's all kinds of stories about people. It's like they're bending over backwards to get killed. Reminds me of a story. Let me paraphrase. For want of a nail, the kingdom was lost. Well, be seeing ya. Ah! <laughs>